Hello, David here at merchantaccounts.ca. What is 3D Secure? That's the topic I'm gonna to tackle today. And I'll start by telling you, it's probably one of the most important tools that e-commerce merchants can ever hope to use in order to minimize fraud. Stay tuned, we'll dig in in one second. So as I said, 3D Secure is a security tool for only for e-commerce merchants, e-commerce websites that's built to prevent fraud. Now I should start by stating that there are two versions of 3D Secure. The original version was not that good. It brought up a pop-up box during the checkout process for every customer. It caused a ton of customer frustration and click-offs, which is death to e-commerce merchants. But that service has been discontinued and a much better version two of 3D Secure is now out. And that's what we'll be talking about today. The main difference between version one and version two of 3D Secure is that friction. 3D Secure version two is supposed to be frictionless. Your customers aren't even supposed to know that you're using it. That's really great for the marketers out there who care about friction, card abandonment, all that stuff. But for the financial folks, and I guess like business owners and everyone, the main benefit of using 3D Secure is if you get a 3D Secure authentication, you can't get a chargeback for that order. So sit there and think about every frustrating loss your business has ever had to somebody who used a stolen credit card. That problem is completely solved. You can't get a chargeback on a 3D Secure authenticated transaction, and that's the main reason to use it. There are other anti-fraud solutions out there, but this is the only one endorsed officially by Visa and MasterCard, so you can't get chargebacks for fraud reasons. It works like this. Normally when you process an e-commerce transaction, your website talks to a payment gateway. Your website goes, hey payment gateway, wake up. It's me, t-shirts.com, uh, can you please run this credit card transaction for me. Here's the credit card number and you know, you talk to the gateway and the gateway does its thing. With 3D Secure, that will still happen, but not yet. There is an extra step that happens before. Your website doesn't start by talking to the payment gateway, it talks to a 3D Secure provider. It says, hey 3D Secure company, I have this guy here, Dave, and he wants to process a $500 order on his credit card and I'd like you to 3D Secure authenticate or make this transaction 3D, 3D Secure authenticated. Behind the scenes, what happens is the 3D Secure provider talks to your customer's card issuing bank about the order. You're asking the card issuer to give a 3D Secure approval. Now, without getting too technical, in the step where your website talks to the 3D Secure provider, there's a lot of info being passed. Now, the API is really easy to use. So like programmatically, it's not that hard to set up, but there's, there's a lot of info going over. There's over a hundred data elements. So that's a lot of info that the card issuer is able to look at and evaluate. Is this a legitimate transaction? What they're trying to, de to determine is if this is really the cardholder. In this example, is it really Dave trying to buy this stuff? Now, in the original version of 3D Secure, they didn't pass all these data elements. They just forced the customer to type in a secret password. Everybody had, back in the day, you had a verified by Visa or a MasterCard secure code password, which was an extra thing that people had to remember. It was very intrusive. It was like a big, ugly overlay on the, on the e-commerce website that came up. It caused a lot of problems. And it, here's the point though, it always happened. That's what I'm really trying to dig into here. On every order with the origin, original version of 3D Secure, the customer was always bothered, they had to do something. But that's the magic of 3D Secure version two because so many data elements are passed in the transaction request, there's enough info there for the card issuer to determine, usually be able to determine whether to issue a 3D Secure approval or not. Roughly, roughly, 80% of the time, that 3D Secure approval is just supposed to automatically happen. This is the merchant, you don't need to do anything, and the cardholder doesn't need to do anything. Now, once you get that 3D Secure approval, that approval that you wanted to come back, the 3D Secure provider talks back to your website. Hey, you asked me to 3D Secure Dave. Well, we did, here's your 3D Secure code. At that point, your website will talk to the payment gateway as normal, just like it does now. Like if you have an e-commerce website today, your website is talking to a payment gateway. It's gonna do exactly that. Your website's gonna to talk to the payment gateway exactly as normal, but you're gonna include one extra thing now. You're going to include your 3D Secure authentication code. And that's how your payment processor knows, hey, this isn't a normal order. This is a 3D Secure authenticated order. 
and that gets passed all the way into Visa and MasterCard, and that is the magic. That's what protects you from getting a chargeback because you got the 3D Secure authentication. If in the future that cardholder ever contacts their bank to try and claim fraud, they will lose because this is now a 3D Secure authenticated order. And what's really important to point out is in everything I've described so far, your customer didn't even know. They weren't bothered, they didn't have to type in a password or anything. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the card issuer gets it wrong. So let's assume that it's a legitimate customer, but the card issuer doesn't automatically issue a 3D Secure approval. Are you stuck? No, you can still get a 3D Secure approval. What happens is at that point, if it's not automatically approved, you can, or the card issuer will display a challenge step, kind of like the original version of 3D Secure, but not such a pain. It's a lot, the interface is a, is a lot better. How it works most typically is the card issuer will send a text to the cardholder's phone. This all happens automatically. As the merchant, you don't have to do it. It's all taken care of for you by the 3D Secure provider. What will happen is the customer will get either a text message or maybe a phone call or often, especially for European cardholders, a message in their mobile banking app. And what will happen, for example, most Canadian banks issue text to the cardholder and it will say, We're we see you trying to do this $500 transaction on your Visa card ending in da 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 da. If this is a legitimate transaction, please text back one and we will approve it. And if so, the customer just texts back one to that text message from their issuing bank. And again, the issuing bank approves, they th now 3D secure the transaction because it passed the second factor of authentication. So what I just described was a 3D secure transaction where the automatic approval failed, but then the, the customer did successfully complete the challenge step. Here's the important bit. You don't have to issue that challenge step. Some people, some merchants are really worried about friction. They don't want the customer to have to do anything. They like the advantage of 3D Secure, they like the fraud protection, but they don't want the customer jumping through any hoops. I'm describing a merchant that's more worried about conversions, they want every sale they can get, rather than a merchant that's worried about fraud. And in that case, that challenge step that I described is optional. So you send the request to the 3D Secure provider, and this 3D Secure provider in this example does not automatically issue the 3D Secure approval, you don't have to proceed with the challenge step. You don't have to, you don't have to hassle the customer. You can then just go back, to, it'll go back to your website, and then you just send the transaction as normal to the payment gateway as normal. You don't include a 3D Secure authentication code because you don't have one, and it's just a normal e-commerce transaction. Unfortunately though, you won't be protected from chargebacks because you did not successfully get the 3D Secure authentication. And I'm just, what I'm trying to do, and I'm not trying to confuse my viewers here if you might not understand what I'm saying, 3D Secure version two is flexible. You can always seek an automatic approval, but where you don't get it, you can then either choose to allow the customer to go through the challenge step, or you don't have to, you can just proceed with a normal transaction without 3D Secure. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand and why I wanted to be very clear in this part of the video. If you do decide to proceed with orders that failed 3D Secure authentication, those are suspect orders. You need to be doing something. My recommendation would be to manually follow up with the orders that failed 3D Secure. That way, if you're really worried about cart abandonment or friction, you can still let the orders through, but you have to spot and stop the fraudulent ones. In reality though, this depends on your business, how expensive your items are, how many orders you do per day, and is it even humanly possible to scrub through that many orders manually? Anyways, this is something for you to consider about your business. In terms of costs, how much is 3D Secure? It's usually around 15 cents per transaction, depending on which 3D Secure provider that you choose to use. You might be wondering, also, do I need to like, go and find a company to do this? Does my credit card processor support 3D Secure? Most credit card processors have a 3D Secure partner that they work with by default. 3D Secure is a global standard. So you can use any 3D Secure provider on earth. It doesn't matter which 3D Secure provider that you choose to use, they will work just fine with your payment processor but your payment processor probably already has a 3D Secure service that they work with, so you should, just, you should just ask them about it if you're curious about using it. 
at merchantaccounts.ca. We've partnered with a company called Pay, and we actually did a podcast with them describing in more detail the ins and outs of 3D Secure. Please check that out if you want to learn more. There'll be a link in the description in the video. So in summary, as far as 3D Secure goes, there's really only two real limitations. First, it's only available for e-commerce merchants. It doesn't work outside of that. So if you have customers on the phone and you're keying the orders manually into your virtual terminal, that won't work. It has to be the cardholder entering the data themselves on an e-commerce website. The second limitation is it only protects against chargebacks for fraud or no cardholder authentication. It won't stop chargebacks for things like, hey, the item I got wasn't as described, or hey, I never got my item in the first place. That doesn't work. If you do want to take 3D Secure for your business, why not consider reaching out to us at merchantaccounts.ca. We can give you a price for 3D Secure and for your credit card processing and answer any questions you have. And if you are having problems through your online store with fraud, you really should seriously consider 3DS version 2. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day there. Bye now. Thank you.